Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to focus in on searching because they've made some big changes to how search works on Plex, and you now have many more ways to customize it to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. So we're gonna dive into this feature in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what Plex Search is all about. All right, so let's start off with a basic search here. Let's look for Ghostbusters and see what we come up with. Now, as you know, for a while now, Plex has been integrating things that are on servers that you have access to along with some of their free content. So as you can see here, I do have Ghostbusters on my server, but there's also stuff coming in here from the on-demand features that are now part of Plex. And before, it was all just mixed together and you really couldn't get rid of the stuff you didn't want to see. Now you've got some more options. So the big change here on search is if you go over to this little icon that will pop up when you are in the search field, you can actually specify where search is looking. So for example, I could turn off all of the free stuff if I don't want to see that. I can even turn off individual servers here too and only have it search on my local server. So if I go back here and search for Ghostbusters, now you can see my search results are much more narrow and only now I'm seeing the movies that are on my server and not anywhere else. So now we're gonna do a search for Sonic the Hedgehog and what I'm gonna do is just type in Sonic up here on the search bar, but I've also re-enabled all of the search sources that I have. Now front and center, I've got the two Sonic the Hedgehog movies as my first results, but if I go over here to live TV, I can narrow it down to things that are currently streaming on the Plex free streaming service. So if I click on this, it will bring me right to a Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon that is running 24 seven on the Plex streaming service. So there might be an old TV show that you're looking for, that you may or may not have on your server, but if it's streaming live, you can pull that down from one of the streaming services that Plex is running in their live section. Now you can also do a search for specific actors, and in this case, I typed in Mark Hamill, and as you can see here, I have two people results here right at the top. If I look at the second one here, I can actually narrow my search down to a specific server and library so if I just wanted to see TV shows on my own server that Mark Hamill is in, selecting that option would bring me there. I have a bunch of movies and shows that he's in, and then if I click on the top link here, I'm brought to his person page, and here I'll see a list of some of the things that are in my media libraries that I have access to, both mine and my friends. I have a list of things that are on Plex, and then I get kind of his filmography of different content that he is known for, that may or may not be on Plex, but might be on other servers. So you do get a good amount of drill down here on a specific actor. Now, in addition to searching for something specific, you also have genre searches. So for example, I just typed in sci-fi up here, and I have, again, all my sources selected. And what I'll get at the top of the results is a genre option. And if I click on that, I can search for sci-fi movies on servers that I have access to but I could also click on free on demand and see what Plex has available for me for free movies that I can stream that are of the sci-fi genre. So you can go a little bit broader in your searches here as well. Now, as we've talked about in prior videos, Plex has a watch list feature that kind of works as a to-do list of different things that you might want to watch. And you can actually add and remove things from your watch list right from the search results here. So for example, if I wanted to add Men in Black the movie to my watch list, I just click on it and it's added. So I don't have to go jump out and click on something else. I can do it right here from the search and then move on to another search. I can also click the button here to start playing it immediately. And because this is on my server, I can also go in and start editing the metadata right from my search result here to update what that looks like in my library. So you get access to everything that you would have within your library here right from a search result. Now, when we covered the watch list feature, we also showed how Plex is now indexing content from a lot of other services. So even if you don't have it on your server, and even if Plex doesn't have it on theirs, they can show you where to watch something. So for example, I did a search here for a Netflix show called Bodies, actually a really cool time travel show. And if you click on it, 
you will get where you can watch bodies from. And here it is on Netflix and with all the episodes and everything all indexed here. And like all of the other results, I can very easily just add this to my watch list right from the results and keep track of what I want to see. Now, another thing you can do is actually search for a service. So if I type in Netflix here, you can see it'll bring me to the Netflix service and I can see what's trending on Netflix, what was recently released. In some ways, this might be better than browsing the Netflix homepage on your own. And you can see whether or not it's worth continuing that subscription uh, just by going to that part of the search. So you can search for individual content, you can search for genres, you can search for actors, you can then search for services and see what's out there. And you can get a lot out of this search feature, I think. Now it does remember your search settings on each client. So for example, on my computer here, I have it now just searching my local server. And the next time I log into Plex on this computer, this setting will be retained. So if you really don't wanna see the other stuff, you can set it once and that should be it. You will only get stuff from your server. Let's take a look now and see how search looks on other clients. So this is what it'll look like on a television. This is an Android TV box, but other TV boxes should look similar. And as you can see here, we've got search right at the top and I can select search and I'm brought into the search interface. Now I can use my voice to do a search. I can also type into the search field here with the keyboard. And if you look over here, we have access to a very similar settings preference that we had on the computer. So I can set which libraries to search. I can decide whether or not I want to search the Plex content. And I also have the option here to use the system keyboard instead of the Plex one. Now, one neat thing about the TV interface is that it will keep a history of what you have searched for. You can clear that out if you want, but if you are looking for something frequently and you don't want to type it in every time, it will remember it down there. Also, while you are typing, it will suggest things down here too to limit the amount of hunting and pecking that you have to do. I'm gonna execute this search for Star Wars. You can see it also brings up some of those suggestions here if I'm looking for something more specific. And if I right arrow over, I have pretty much the same options that I did on the web interface. Now, if I wanted to add a piece of content to my watch list, what I can do is hold down the button and that will bring up this menu. Now, of course, I can play it here. I can use the watch together feature that we covered a while back. I can add it to a playlist if I want that is different than the watch list, or I can go down here and add it to my watch list. Now, one of the things that I've set up on my server is the ability to delete things from the interface. You may not want this, but I'm the only one that uses my server, but you could even delete content after you were done watching it if you wanted to right from your TV remote. But if I single tap it here, I'm brought to the watch page. So you have the ability to get to your content quickly or manage your watch lists and playlists right from the remote control. Now on mobile, it's pretty much the same story here. You can type your search in on the search bar. You have your preferences for where you want the search to be conducted, just like we saw on the other platforms. And when you have your search executed, you have your filtering options here. If you click on the little periods to the side, you can add shows to your watch list as well or tap directly in there to be able to watch it. And in this case, this is an Apple TV show. It's not on my server, but I can click on that and be taken over to the Apple TV Plus app. So that is searching on Plex. If you haven't used the search feature in a while, I think you'll be happy with some of the changes they made. It is much easier now to get at your content versus all the other stuff, but it also makes it easier to have your content interact with the other stuff if you don't mind seeing that in your results too. So let me know what you thought of searching on Plex with these new changes to the search engine. And that'll do it for this one. I wanna thank Plex for their longstanding support of the channel. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.